Hey guys, this is Rob and welcome to the channel. In this one, we're going to take a look at how to customize the out of the box Revit receptacle. We're gonna change its symbol. And if you stick around, we're also going to change how it looks in three dimensions to give it a little more pop in elevations and 3D views and sections. So stick around. So I'm in this Electrical Families library that I created in another video, which I'll link up above that shows pretty much all of the out of the box electrical families that come with Revit. And they look pretty good. I mean, some of these are okay, you know, some are kind of different and it depends on which country you're in and which, you know, which area even of the US you're in to decide which symbol you use. For example, duplex receptacle. This simple symbol is either done this way with the two blades facing the wall or the opposite with the circle and the two blades facing away from the wall. So I've seen it about 50-50, even in our own region in, in the Northwest. So if you want to change this to be the other way around, which is the way I, I use it and we use it in our firm, we can simply go into this family and change this symbol to look the way we want. And it's a good practice for getting your foot in the door for editing families. So let us do that right now. We're gonna edit this family and we're gonna change this symbol around. And if you stick around to the end, I'm gonna show you how we can improve the 3D look of this because right now this just looks like a rectangle on the wall if you look in 3D. So let's get right into editing this family. Let's get this symbol fixed up. So we're gonna click on it and jump into edit family. If you're kind of leery about doing this or your first time to edit a family, this is a good way to practice, a good way to learn is to edit an existing family. So we jump in here and right away we see this big extrusion and that represents the surface that this receptacle gets mounted to or hosted to. So this is our indication that this is a hosted family. It sticks to a wall, it has to have a wall or some other kind of work surface, a plane to attach to. The green circle with the plus is our electrical connector which allows us to connect it up to panels and such. So that's, of course, very important. We're not gonna mess with that, that's already set up. But as you can see, in three dimensions, we have a, what looks like a cover plate. So that is what shows up. There's nothing on that cover, it's just blank. And then if we start looking at other views, we can see what's going on here. Let's open up the views. We've got floor plan, we don't worry about ceiling. So we're in view one 3D, we've got elevations, if we go to reference level, now you zoom in on this and you can see, first of all, here's our symbol. And then these boxes are part of the 3D extrusions for this guy. So this one is probably the faceplate and this must be the box behind it. If we're, this is top view, then looking up from the bottom of this view would actually be a front view. Let's look at the front view. Here's our big extrusion. Now, here we go, in a cross section, we can see there's a, a face plate, and then here's the box that extends into the wall. And so this gives you kind of a 3D idea of what it would look like. Now, we also notice all these green dashed lines are our reference planes. These are what becomes the skeleton of a 3D model, and it helps us set up dimensions, and we can move these things around to, to stretch the extrusions. What I don't see is any dimensions on any of these views. So you click on the right view, now here's the wider part of that box. But again, no dimensions. So I think what's going on, this, these views from Revit don't have dimensions turned on. So go back to reference level, and let's go up to view visibility graphics. So in a model, you would be able to come over here and, and do it, but it, it doesn't show up. So we need to go to visibility graphics here, Electrical fixtures, the 3D aspects are turned on, but under annotations, levels, reference lines, reference planes are turned on, but dimensions are off. Turn those back on. Now we can see some dimensions. This little guy here, three inches tall box, the, and it's set to equalize so that it's centered. And then over here we have more equals, and then this is the four and a half inch tall face plate. And the width on the face plate is two and three quarter, and the width on the box is one and a half. So I mean, these dimensions work, you know, we're just getting close. So that works fine. If we were gonna change some of these dimensions, you, this is how you would do it. But what we are gonna work on is actually this symbol. And you can see that it's turned around. 
to be blades against the wall, this intersection of these two reference planes, this is a center front back, and this is a center left right, that intersection is the insertion point of this symbol. So we actually want this to be flipped around. Now, I could just take this and flip it around, but it does strange things to the insertion. I actually need to change this symbol. I need to keep this orientation, but I need to change the symbol to get the circle down here. Well, this symbol, as you can see, is all one piece. It's a generic annotation. So it is its own family, an annotative family. An annotative family, of course, means that it's going to be the same physical size in paper space, no matter what scale the drawing is. So this receptacle, let's say it's an eighth inch circle, will always be an eighth inch circle. So it's an annotative symbol. It's a family, so we need to actually get into this nested family and edit this. So here's another edit family. This symbol is its own generic annotation type of family. So we're going to modify this. Now, I don't even see reference planes or anything in this. So let's see what's going on with that. This big A is a label that lets you put GFI, GFCI, you know, weatherproof, whatever you want. I don't typically use those. It's my personal preference. I like to just type those in as text because these labels kind of behave strangely. They don't rotate. Um, they don't hide behind a mask, things like that. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. We're going to leave it. But let's actually work on this. So we, I want to make sure that in this view, I can see the dimensions. So again, under view, visibility graphics, I need to go to my annotated. And you see dimensions are off and even the reference lines and planes are off. So I need to get those back on. So there we go. So here's all the dimension lines. So I want to, so I want to move the circle around. If I just move it down like this, it, it seems to move the blades as well. So let me undo that. I need to disconnect this circle from the rest of this by unjoin them. So now it's its own thing and unjoin. So let's get this back up here and this circle. Now to help me align this circle a little better, I'm going to turn the center mark visible on. And that gives me this target center mark that I can align with this vertical reference plane. So let me just hit the align button to that from there. Now the bottom is going to be trickier because I'm just moving it. I'm just moving it down. And I want to go down a little further. So I'll move it down first and then I'll realign this. And what's happening is I did not lock it. There we go. Lock that. That center mark only shows up when I'm editing this family. It won't show up. So that's as simple as that. I just moved a circle from up here to down here. Now I'm going to save this symbol, symbol family, and I'm going to give it a custom ER in front of it for electric rob, of course. Save that, and then let us load this symbol family, not into my whole project, but just into my duplex receptacle. Now I can put that right there and I can get rid of the other one. Now I have the symbol in the orientation that I want it to be. Now I can save this family as a custom family. So I've had to modify two families to do this. Save that. Now if I was to bring this into my project, overwrite the existing, It's a separate family. So now I need to find it down here. Here's ER duplex receptacle, bringing the standard. Now you can see that it's trying to host to this wall and it's turned in the direction that I would like for my symbol. So if you're getting something out of this, I'd appreciate you hitting that like down below to help spread it to others who may need it. And also, you know, click subscribe if you want to hang around and see some more electrical only Revit videos. Appreciate it very much. One other thing I'd like to show you before we move on is these lines are awfully thin. I really would like them to, I mean, look at the wall, it's thick. I want these to pop out. Now, these are annotation symbols. 
I need to change the line type of these. So how do I do that? Let's go up to Manage, Object Styles, Line Weights, Colors, Patterns, okay? Now, I don't need to change the model objects because my electrical fixtures, electrical fixtures and equipment are set for one. Those are more like the, the 3D aspect of it. I want to change the annotative element of this. So I need to go to annotative and I need to go down to generic annotations. And I need to bump this up from a one and I'm going to bump it up maybe to like a three in line weight. Right there. See how this popped out? So you can play with that, but that really helps your symbols pop out in a electrical drawing. So that's that. So there's the 2D aspect of this symbol. Now, like I said, at the beginning of this video, if you wait to the end, I'm going to show you how to modify the 3D aspect of this. So let's get into that. First of all, let's look at a section view of this because we want to affect the section view. Sometimes we draw a section of our walls, which end up being like an elevation. Architects sometimes want to do this with our stuff. So let's get to take a look at this. And, and these are all just, they're all just boxes. I mean, it's just, it's just a cover plate, blank cover plate. We would like this to look more like an actual receptacle. And what does a receptacle look like? That's the old school guy. There's also, of course, Decora models, which you can go either way. I tend to make, make them look like this. I think it's, uh, I like the retro look of these, at least for our models. So we are going to make it look closer to this. Also in 3D, let's drop a camera in here, camera, point it this way, take a look at it in 3D. You can see the box in there. But yeah, we need this cover plate to actually have something on it. Now, I don't need to get all crazy with 3D extrusions and void regions, things like that. I just need to paint a receptacle picture on the face of this. So how can we do that? Back to Edit Family. Let's get back to our views, our floor plan. Reference level ends up being the front view of this receptacle. Now I need to, to paint what I call painting a picture onto the face of this. And what I use for that is called create model lines. Model lines are just that. They show up in the 3D model. They're not just annotations that show up in, in views. So we need to actually create lines that end up in the 3D aspect of the model as opposed to, again, under annotate, you would have symbolic lines, which are symbols only. So let's go to create model line. Now, before I create a model line, I have to decide where am I drawing this model line? Where on this 3D model of a receptacle am I painting this picture? You know, am I doing it on the edge? Am I doing it on the box behind it, I need to be the face of this cover plate. So I need to set that up first and tell Revit that that's where I want to paint it. Now, in this view, it is tough to select up here under work plane. I want to set my work plane, specifies the work plane for the current view. So I want to set that. Now, I can pick it, select a new work plane to draw on by name. Well, I have reference level, center, center, level above, level below. I don't know what all these are. Or I can pick a plane by graphically selecting it, but, you know, I'm hitting that extrusion. Maybe that's what I want. Is that the face front of it or the back of it? So this is a tough view to decide which face I'm going to draw on. So if I go to the 3D view, it's a little better. I can go to set and then I can pick a plane. Okay. And now I can kind of highlight different planes. This is the back. You can see the blue. That would be the back of the faceplate. And then maybe I can pick some of these edges. There's that, the bottom edge. But I want the face. So there, that highlighted blue. If I click face, now I should be drawn on the face of this. Another way to do it is to label the names of the reference planes. Let me go to this view here. The front view, which ends up looking at the bottom of the box. We have this reference plane here, which is the face of the face plate. Does it have a name? Click on it. 
identity name. It is called Level Above. And you can see it over here as well. It's called Level Above. Now, I would have called it Base or something like that. But Level Above is the name of that work plane. So, again, back here, we can go to Create, Set This. We can do it by name now. We can go Level Above. And that would select the same work plane. Now we can start drawing. So again, let's see what we're going to draw. It's something like a one inch circle with stop with flat top and bottom might be good enough. I don't know that we need the screw. We really don't even need all the holes for the blades, but you know, we, you can, you can get as detailed as you like. Just remember um, the more detail you have, the more draw time and generation time it takes. But luckily this is just model lines. It's not extrusions. So I'm just going to approximate this with circles. I don't need to worry about that. So let's go to create model line and let's hit circle and let's get it centered between top and bottom. Again, this is just rough. There's a one inch, let's go a little bit further, something like that. And then if I want to get fancy, let's go ahead and put in some rectangles. We can get the hole for the blades and we can even get the hole for the round blade. We can mirror this. So let's go get all of it, select it, hit mirror from an axis, use this as the axis, and that gives us our blade. Now to me that looks fine, what we're going after. Now actually we don't want to mirror this, we just want to copy it. Copy it from there to there. Hopefully that kind of centers it. Now let's see what this looks like in our view. See that there? I think that is plenty of detail to get across the idea that that is a receptacle. So we're going to stick with that. So now we're going to save it and load it into our family to see what it looks like. Now let's go ahead and look at this section and we can see that our family looks like what we want. Now in this scale, it ends up being a little mushy because of this line type, but it, that's what it's gonna look like in our model. And even in 3D, it looks like that. So there you go. You can spruce up your existing receptacles. You can do this with switches, with data outlets, anything you like, just paint a nice picture on the front and that will help your models look a little more realistic. Thanks for watching.